Hi, I'm John Reagan. Uh, I'm with Fun Projects Incorporated. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Model T ignition coils, uh, their proper operation, and coil testing. And I'm going to introduce the uh, new uh, Strobel Spark Model T Ford coil tester that uh, is our latest product. Model T Ford ignition is uh, provided by coils, <laughs> obviously. For, for a Model T to run properly, a coil must deliver one and only one spark for each occurrence of a magneto uh, current pulse that comes through the timer and is connected then to the coil. Uh, through the years there have been a number of testers that have been developed uh, to try and, and, and properly test a Model T coil and to facilitate the proper adjustment of a Model T coil because without proper adjustment it just simply will not work very well. Uh, the three uh, testers that come to mind is the, probably the most successful coil tester is the hand cranked coil tester. Ford thought enough of this particular tester to uh, actually make them or have a company make and produce those and almost every Ford dealership did have a hand crank coil tester during the Model T Ford era. Another type of coil tester that uh, people bought and used was what is commonly referred to as a buzz box. A buzz box uh, powers the coil with either a battery or a small AC transformer has a meter in, uh, in series with the uh, power source to the, to the coil. Uh, you generally, you plug the coil in, the co coil will buzz because continuous power is applied to it, and the meter will read the operate current. Uh, this type of tester, unfortunately, does not give you any indication of whether the coil might be double sparking or, in fact, misfiring. And uh, actually, the current reading that you adjust it to can also be off quite a ways if the coil is, in fact, double sparking. Uh, double sparking is, a, is, is a, a, a phenomenon that occurs with a Model T coil when it's improperly adjusted and what is actually happening is during a magneto current pulse that's fed to the coil, the coil will fire twice. It will generally uh, uh, fire too soon uh, before the current is ramped up to its full operate uh, power uh, and then it will fire again uh, a second time. So it fires twice on the, on the way up as we call it or on the ramp, uh, ramp up pulse. Uh, this results in the current setting being way off. If you're actually measuring that current on the meter, you're measuring two pulses instead of one. So your, your reading can be off as much as 100% uh, off. You can be actually uh, setting for twice or half the current, depending on which way you're, you're doing it. Um, the hand crank coil tester will uh, display for you whether the coil is single sparking or double sparking, as will our, our strobel spark tester. Uh, the cause of double sparking is too much or too little tension on the cushion spring portion of the coil. If I can identify the, the parts of the, the point mechanism, the lower uh, part of the mechanism is referred to as the vibrator. The vibrator is the uh, tension is adjusted by bending the rear foot. The vibrator has the lower contact attached to it and increasing and decreasing the tension of the vibrator spring is what sets the operate current of the coil. Uh, the upper point uh, is connected to uh, or fastened to a blade spring that's on the underside of this upper piece which is called the bridge. The upper piece is the bridge or the blade spring underneath that's fastened to it is called the cushion spring and the upper point is fastened to the cushion spring. There's also a rivet that sets the downward travel limit of the cushion spring. So what happens is is as the current begins to build up in the coil it starts to pull the vibrator down. As the vibrator comes down the, uh, if there's proper cushion spring tension, the upper point will follow the lower point down. It will, they will actually move together until finally the upper cushion spring hits the limit rivet. It hits the head of that rivet. It stops going down. The vibrator continues on down and the points open and the coil fires. If that upper cushion spring does not have the right amount of tension on it, it will not properly follow the uh, vibrator spring down and it will, it will open too soon. It will open before it hits the rivet. Uh, if it has too much, it will, it will actually uh, uh, open too soon, and, and it may even bounce on the rivet. There's all sorts of anomalies that can occur if the cushion spring tension isn't properly set. So too much or too little current, uh, cushion spring tension will result in double sparking, and that's probably the most common uh, cause of misfire and improper running of a Model T. I will, at this time, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the Strobel Spark Tester and, and, and what, uh, what it brings to, to, uh, to the party, if you will, uh, for coil testing. Inside every coil, there is a capacitor. The capacitor 
uh, must be of the proper value and it must not uh, have any leakage. In other words, it must be fairly new. Uh, when capacitors get old, they act like resistors, so they have leakage, leakage resistance across the contacts. The capacitor is wired internally to a coil such that if, it's, uh, if the coil has a set of points on top installed, the points are closed, they're shorting out the capacitor. So to actually measure the value of the capacitor inside, it's necessary to open the points. I'm going to plug in the strobo spark at this time. It runs on this small module uh, that plugs into the wall, and I will plug it in. And you can see that it will light up, and if you, the camera is able to pick it up, you should see a little wheel up here that's spinning around with a little pointer on it. That's the strobo wheel. That's the spark wheel. It's just like a hand crank coil tester in that there's a high voltage ring that's behind uh, the, the panel in here that the coil is going to feed the high voltage to and it will spark to the pointer depending on where the pointer is at. The strobo spark is different than a coil hand crank coil tester because it's, it's spinning much faster. It's operating the coil at 450 RPM, uh, much faster than you can crank. And I, there have been uh, cases of where I have coils that I've set up in a hand crank tester didn't want to quite run right in the car, and lo and behold, when I put them on the struggle spark, they were double sparking. It just wasn't visible. Uh, probably if I'd have been able to crank faster, I would have been able to get them to double spark on my hand crank tester. If I call your attention to the front panel controls of the struggle spark, we have over here what is generally referred to as the magneto switch. Uh, we have the ability, with, by changing this uh, switch to three positions, low, medium, and high, uh, to simulate uh, a uh, weak, strong, or average magneto. Some coils uh, will do things, anomalies maybe with too weak a magneto or a strong magneto that they will not do under just normal conditions. So uh, these are uh, can be pretty handy for trying to aggravate the conditions under which you can test the coil. The uh, the meter switch is the, the switch here in the middle. Uh, that has the ability to, to be in the cap value position which it's in right now, the cap leakage position which I just switched it to, and the coil amps position. Only when it's in the coil amps position does the magneto switch over here have any effect. At all other times, uh, this switch will then not do anything. And of course, to perform an actual test, we push the button to actually connect it. So that the high voltage won't be coming out of the, the coil the whole time. Uh, it'll only be there when you press the button to test it. 